Welcome, and thank you for choosing Memorial Care Long Beach Medical Center for your spine surgery. The purpose of this class is to answer your questions and guide you through what you can expect from the pre-surgical process through the post-surgical healing process. This material is a general overview and designed to supplement your surgeon's instructions. Information provided by your surgeon is specific to your individual needs and should always be followed. Our mission is to build a community of informed patients and dedicated providers who have ongoing collaboration throughout the preoperative, procedural, short-term recovery, and long-term recovery process. We strive to provide evidence-based education, tools, and guidance to assist our patients in achieving optimal recovery. The goal for a successful recovery includes returning to unrestricted activity and potentially beginning new activities that were previously difficult due to pain and disability. The next section that we discuss will be pre-surgery preparation. In preparation for your surgery, please make sure that you're getting medical clearance by your primary care doctor or specialist if directed by your surgeon, as well as any required preoperative test. Preoperative blood work and EKGs can be completed through the admitting department at the hospital without an appointment or can be completed at your primary care doctor's office. A COVID test must also be completed two days prior to your surgery. The COVID tests are completed at Buffum Medical Pavilion. An appointment is required for this test. Please call 562-933-1042 to schedule this appointment. Hospital pre-admission will also need to be completed. Hospital pre-admission is a two-part process that involves admitting and nursing. The pre-admission process is not completed until you have done both parts. The admitting department must verify your demographic and insurance information. This can be completed over the phone or may be done in person if you come to the hospital to complete any preoperative testing. Admitting is located on the first floor adjacent to the main lobby. The nursing portion of the pre-admission process consists of a phone interview. An appointment is needed for this interview. Please call 562-933-1042 to schedule your appointment for your nursing call. Please also have a current list of medications ready for this call. Final confirmation of your arrival time and anticipated surgery start time will be a phone call from the hospital the day before your surgery. You will receive instruction as to when to stop eating and drinking and which medications to take or not take on the morning of surgery during your pre-admission phone interview. Please stop any supplements, aspirin, anti-inflammatory medications prescribed and over-the-counter seven to 10 days before surgery. If you are taking any prescribed blood thinning medications, please seek advice from the prescribing doctor and your surgeon as to when to discontinue these medications before surgery. It is important to secure a strong support system prior to surgery. You will have restrictions in place after surgery that prevent you from being able to fully complete household chores such as cooking, laundry, housekeeping, shopping, running errands, and caring for pets. You will need to seek assistance from family members or friends to help with these things. It is strongly suggested that you have someone stay with you for the first 48 to 72 hours after surgery. After this period of time, you will still need daily intermittent assistance due to the restrictions that you will have in place. Please ask your surgeon when you should return to work and when you will be able to travel, drive, and have dental work completed. Returning to your home after surgery is the preferred option to decrease the chances of infection. Additionally, patients tend to recover better at home as you will naturally be more active in your own home. Familiarity, privacy, eating your own preferred foods, and establishing your own routine are also benefits to discharging directly home rather than an alternate facility. Discharging to a rehab or a skilled nursing facility after surgery should only be considered as a last resort if it has been determined that your own private home is not a safe option. It is strongly recommended that you prepare your home prior to surgery so that it's safe to return and the chances of falls are reduced. Please keep clear hallways for use of a walker, remove any loose throw rugs, remove extension cords that may pose a fall risk, arrange adequate lighting for nights, 
and arrange frequently used toiletries, clothes, and dishes at counter level for easy access. Please be aware of any uneven surfaces outside or inside your home, if possible, to prevent falls. A handheld shower and shower bench may be helpful and should be installed and purchased prior to surgery. Having a supportive chair or sofa and an armrest so that you can minimize time in bed is also important. An elevated toilet seat may be helpful if you have a low toilet and should be purchased prior to surgery. It's also important to arrange for a caregiver for the first one to two weeks following surgery, as well as pet care if you have pets. High quality nutrition is essential in aiding to the healing process after surgery. It's suggested that you begin increasing protein intake several weeks before surgery. Focus on high quality proteins, which include poultry, lean beef, eggs, nuts, seeds, and fish. Protein shakes can be considered as a supplement to add additional protein. A registered dietitian will be available upon request to address any dietary related concerns or questions that you may have. The misuse of prescription opioids is one of the most common types of illegal drug use. An example of this would be given prescribed medication to a friend or relative. If you receive specific disposal instructions from your healthcare provider, such as your doctor or pharmacist, for your unused or expired medication, you should follow those instructions to dispose of your medication. The best option is to find a drug take back program in your local area, which may be found in retail, hospital or clinic pharmacies and law enforcement facilities. If you don't have a drug take back program near you, check the FDA's flush list to see if the medication that you have is on that list. Remember, don't flush any medications that are not listed on the FDA flush list. If you do not have a drug take back program readily available to you and have been prescribed drugs that are not listed on the FDA flush list, please dispose of these medications in the trash by following the instructions listed on this slide. We suggest that you bring loose fitting clothing with you to the hospital to wear during your stay. An example of this would be loose fitting t-shirts, sweatpants or shorts, and sneakers with good tread. Please avoid any clothing that touches the ground as this can pose a fall risk after surgery. You can also bring any personal toiletries or personal use items such as your cell phone. If you have a history of sleep apnea, you are permitted to bring your own CPAP machine for use. Please note that free Wi-Fi is also available for use during your stay and can be found under the name hotspot. On the day of surgery, you must enter the surgery pavilion directly. Their entrance is on the same side of the hospital as the emergency entrance on Columbia Street. Once you enter, check in at the front desk and you will be taken back to the surgical preparation area. Once in the surgical preparation area, you will change into a hospital gown, an IV will be started, and you will be given an antibiotic dose to reduce the chances of infection. You will also meet with the anesthesiologist and surgeon or physician assistant that will be taking care of you. When you meet with the anesthesiologist, they will review your health history and medication list that you provided during your nursing phone interview. They will discuss with you the anesthesia medication that you will be receiving and answer any questions that you may have. The length of your surgery depends on your individual procedure and should be discussed with your surgeon. Once the surgery is over, you will be transferred to the recovery room where you will remain until a bed is available on the spine unit. While you're in the recovery room, we will be monitoring your vital signs, conducting regular neurovascular assessments, and addressing any pain and nausea that you may be having. Once it is deemed that you are medically stable and a room is available on the spine unit, you will be transferred. On the day of surgery, you may still be drowsy from the anesthesia, but physical therapy will still attempt to work with you. If your surgery takes place later in the day, you will be seen by physical therapy the very next morning. We will be regularly assessing your pain levels to ensure that your pain is managed so that you may participate with physical therapy. Therapy and the nursing staff will introduce you to the log rolling technique that you will use to change positions and get in and out of bed. They will also assist you with transferring from the bed to a recliner chair. You will be introduced to a walking program and exercises that you will continue after discharge. The next topic that we will discuss is expectations for home. 
In order for you to be cleared for discharge from the hospital, you will need to be able to tolerate a diet without nausea and vomiting. You will also need to be cleared by physical therapy. For this to take place, you must demonstrate that you are able to safely walk and get in and out of the bed and chair while demonstrating correct mobility techniques. Physical therapy will answer any questions or concerns that you may have about safe mobility. When you are not walking, you will have mechanical compression devices placed on your legs to help prevent blood clots. If you have a urinary catheter or wound drain, these will be removed prior to leaving the hospital. In certain cases, a brace may also be ordered for you to wear when you leave the hospital. If this is the case, your surgeon will instruct you on when to wear the brace and for how long it should be used. Adequate pain management is a crucial part of the recovery process. While you're in the hospital, the nursing staff will be frequently assessing your pain levels using a pain measurement scale from zero to 10. You will be asked to rate your pain at rest and with activity. The pain scale can be seen on this slide. We have several different strategies that we use to help manage your pain. Changing seating positions, deep breathing exercises, and walking are all effective strategies that we will be encouraging to assist in reducing your pain levels. Ice therapy is also an effective pain management strategy. We recommend that you apply ice to your incision approximately six to eight times a day for 20 minutes at a time. This will help to reduce inflammation. Pain medication will also be available. The goal for you is to transition to oral pain medication as soon as possible after your surgery, as oral pain medication will provide the longest lasting pain relief. It's important to note that oral pain medication takes approximately 30 to 45 minutes to take effect and should be taken before the pain reaches a severe level to be the most effective. Constipation is a common occurrence after surgery due to the effects of anesthesia and narcotic pain medication. You will be given stool softeners and laxatives while in the hospital to help alleviate this problem. It's important to have a plan after discharge to minimize the effects of constipation. It's strongly recommended that you purchase medications and take them regularly until you are having regular bowel movements. These medications can be purchased over the counter at your local pharmacy without a prescription. Please note that you are at a continued risk for constipation while taking a narcotic pain medication. Please follow the instructions provided by your surgeon regarding your dressing. Leave the original dressing in place until your follow-up appointment with your surgeon, unless otherwise directed by your surgeon. Avoid submerging the wound in water for at least six weeks until cleared by your surgeon. Cover the dressing in plastic wrap or an AquaGuard lining while showering. Plastic coverings can be purchased at your local pharmacy. Physical therapy will determine what type of adaptive equipment you will need during your physical therapy session. If a front wheel walker is recommended by your therapist and you do not own one, an order will be placed through your insurance by our staff and if covered by insurance will be delivered to the bedside prior to discharge. If one is not covered, they are available for sale in our outpatient pharmacy and can be purchased prior to discharge. Other adaptive equipment, such as a raised toilet seat, is also usually not covered by insurance and if needed, will have to be purchased out of pocket. The most commonly used adaptive equipment can be purchased at our outpatient pharmacy. You are allowed two visitors at the bedside at a time if you're in a private room. Visitors may use the restroom inside your room or the restrooms located near the elevator. Visiting hours are from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. At this time, no overnight stays are allowed. Mobility as soon as possible after surgery is highly encouraged as it has been shown to decrease the length of stay, improve lung capacity, decrease the chances of complications, increase strength and stamina, and increase the chances of discharging directly home. Patients are encouraged to change positions and walk every two hours while awake. We will now review the physical therapy portion of the class. I will turn the presentation over to Alice Murphy, one of our spine physical therapists. And welcome, thanks everybody for watching this video. I feel that the more information you have before your surgery, the, the better prepared, prepared you'll feel and the better the outcome will be. Um, I'm Alice with physical therapy. You'll likely be seeing me after your surgery. So physical therapy will see you the day of your surgery or the following day. 
Our intention at this early stage in recovery is just to teach you the right techniques to get out of bed, to stand, to walk, and to go up and down stairs. We also help you correct your posture and any other compensations you were doing before the surgery due to pain. The sooner we address these things, the better. You may also see an occupational therapist one or two days following your surgery to help you choose any adaptive equipment you might need, uh, such as a toilet riser, a commode, or any tools that you need for self-care activities. So here's a checklist of activities we'll be doing the first or the second day after surgery with physical therapy. We're pretty strict here on cueing you about your body mechanics when rolling over in bed, sitting to standing, and how often you should be walking after surgery. We'll review any appropriate walking program for your level of mobility, as well as post-operative exercises in order to move as well as possible as soon as possible. It's also useful to review how to stand properly, how to bend over, and any other spinal precautions your surgeon may apply. We'll also discuss the best techniques for getting in and out of the passenger seat of a car, as well as how to get up and down stairs. So here are some examples of equipment occupational therapy might recommend to you on that first or second day. The tools on the far right can be pre-ordered before your surgery if you think you'll need them. They come in a package called a hip kit and can be ordered on Amazon. The package includes a sock aid, long-handled sponge, reacher, and a long-handled shoehorn. Your occupational therapist will give you pointers on the best techniques for dressing, bathing, toileting, hygiene, and stepping in and out of your tub or shower. So here are some recommended exercises to try before your surgery. They might help you relieve muscle spasms, any stiffness or nerve pain. They will also improve your mobility before the surgery for a better outcome after surgery. Try these several times a day to see if they help you. There is no set number of repetitions to do that's best for everyone, just try for several minutes to see if they alleviate your pain. Here's a groin stretch to try as well because the inner thighs can become really stiff if you've had back pain for long periods of time. Be sure to take deep breaths for an optimal stretch. The second picture emphasizes gluteals or buttock strengthening exercises, which will help you regain optimal posture after surgery. The research has shown that long-term back pain can significantly weaken the core and gluteal muscles, which will make walking more difficult and more painful. If you're having neck surgery, only lift your hips halfway in order to not strain your neck. If able, try these strengthening exercises every day up until surgery. Here are two more strengthening exercises that are easy and effective for your leg muscles. The stronger your legs become, the less strain there will be on your spine. Make sure to keep your back straight while doing multiple repetitions of these. Ultimately, walking is the best aerobic exercise for your spine before and after surgery. It helps maintain upright posture and neutral weight over your hips. If able, try to start walking up to one hour a day or multiple shorter walks per day in order to become or stay as fit as possible for your upcoming recovery phase. It's best to start thinking about your physical therapy goals before surgery. Think of activities that are difficult to do now or something that you haven't been able to do at all. Try and make these goals realistic to your different phases of healing. For example, walking 30 minutes three weeks after surgery is very reasonable for most of us. And returning to a full golf game after six months with only minimal pain is also very doable. Think of at least one goal, personal and meaningful to you, to achieve at three weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, 
and up to one year after the surgery. Our goals for you align with the World Health Organization's activity recommendations. For adults, which is 20 to 45 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise per day. This intensity should get you close to being short of breath in order to keep your heart and lungs healthy. Three examples are brisk walking, stationary or movable biking, water jogging at either waist or chest deep water. If you choose water jogging, be sure to find a well-fitted buoyancy belt. The World Health Organization also recommends two to three days a week of strengthening. This can start roughly two or so months after surgery. The lunge exercise shows you proper lifting techniques that will prevent further spine injuries. Also consider light dumbbells to build upper back and shoulder muscles several months after surgery. Push-ups are also very healthy for our spines because they strengthen the core musculature in a safe and neutral spine. Push-ups can be started against the wall or in an inclined position and then transition to flat on the floor. Remember that these strengthening exercises should only be initiated about two months after your surgery. Working with a physical therapist after surgery is ideal to help guide you through the right time frame. Lastly, it's best to limit your time sitting and bed rest time after surgery and beyond because it weakens the deep spinal muscles. Sitting or resting too long can also affect our blood pressure and cause us to become dizzy upon standing. So during your awake hours, try to maintain an active sitting posture without back support for up to 30 minutes at a time, and then resting in a recliner no more than one hour at a time. While sitting or resting in the recliner, try to pump your ankles in order to maintain good circulation in your legs. Please feel free to contact us for any questions or concerns you may have. Our email addresses are listed here, and you may also call us at 562-933-4014. We look forward to supporting you on your road to recovery.